Hey guys, in this video we are going to create a responsive navigation menu with HTML, CSS and a little bit of JavaScript. Let me quick explain what we are going to do. I have in my browser a web page displayed in a small screen. The image is the header of my web page and underneath I have a brand name and a navigation menu icon. Clicking on the menu icon we see the navigation links sliding down and when I click again the navigation links are sliding up. Resizing the browser to a wider screen we see the links arranged next to each other and the whole navigation is centered in the page. Now this is an easy task to do but we are going to learn something new out of it. Now let's see what files we need and let's start coding. We need a JavaScript file, we need a style sheet, we need a second style sheet to write our media breakpoints and we need an index file to design our layout. Those are all the files we need. So let's code and start with the header. I'm going to need a div element with a class of header. The header element will be empty. I will set a background image from the CSS file. Let's jump to the CSS file. The first thing that I will do here is to write some global rules. I will target all elements with an asterisk and I will set the margin and padding to zero and the box sizing property to border box. In this way, I will have full control over my design. The border box value tells the browser not to change the dimensions of an element when we add padding to it. Next, I will target the body element and I will apply some basic properties. I will set the font family to sans serif, the height of the document to 100% and the font color to a dark gray. Next, I will target the header. I will set the width also to 100% and the height to 300 pixels. Next, I will set the background image and center it. And next, I will set the image to no repeat and the background size to cover. That means that the image will fit the entire container. That what I forgot to mention is that in the styles.css file, this is the file that we are currently in, we're designing, we're designing the mobile layout. We are going to design the large screen in the media queries.css style sheet. Let's bring the browser in the screen and see what we have so far. Let's reload our index file. There is our image. But when I resize the browser, I want the header to be taller. So let's go to the media queries file and write our breakpoint. I will set the min width to 1050 pixels. That means that every rule that I will write inside the media query will affect our elements when the browser is wider than 1050 pixels. So let's target the header class and set the height to 400 pixels. And let's test it out. I have to reload the page. And it works. We see that the header is taller when we resize the browser. Now let's go back to the index file and create the nav menu. I need a container to wrap my navbar. Inside the container, I will have my nav element. I'm going to split the nav element to three sections. In the first section, we have the logo. In the second section, we will have a container that will hold all the links. And in the third section, we will have the menu icon. Let's go and write the text in the logo container. Next, let's bring in our links. And last, the hex code which displays the menu icon. And that's it. We don't need anything else in the index file. Let's reload the page and see what we have so far. We have the logo, the links and the menu icon as expected. Now let's go to the style sheet and style the nav menu. First of all, I will target the nav wrap container. I will set the width to 100%, the background color to white and a drop shadow at the bottom of the element. Next, I will target the nav element. I will set the display property to grid. That means that I can divide the nav element to rows and columns. Remember that we have divided the nav element in the index page to three sections, the logo, the links and the menu icon. But here I will use the grid template columns property and I will divide the nav element in two columns. I will leave one section out. You will see why. Next, with the grid column gap property, I will set a margin of 30 pixels between the columns. And with the grid template rows property, I will set the height of the nav element to 60 pixels. 
Now going back to the grid template columns property, you see that you see that we set the first column to auto. That means that the width of the column will match the width of the content. This will be the logo. And the second column to one fraction, which means that the second column will span the remaining space. The second column in the mobile design will contain the menu icon and in the large design will contain the links. That's why I need only two grid columns, although my nav element has three sections. I hope it makes sense. Next I will center the content vertical and I will set the position to relative. Now let's style the logo. I will make it bigger, bold, I will give it a padding from the left and a bluish color. Now let's move to the links container. I will set the width to 100%. I will set the position to absolute so I can move it around without messing the layout. And I reposition it 60 pixels down from where it was. You see the new position of the links container in the browser. Next I will give it a background color and a box shadow. We are not done here yet. I will style the A tags first and come back to the links container later. I will target all the A tags inside the links container. I will set the color to white and I will remove the underline. Next, I will display the A tags as block elements and give them some padding. You see that this changed everything. Next, I will separate every link with a dotted border and transform the font to uppercase. I will also set a transition effect to the background color so we have a smooth animated transition when we hover over the links. And I'm done with the A tags. Now, I will go back to the links container and hide it. I will set the max height property to 0 pixels and the overflow to hidden. This will hide the links container. And I will also set a transition effect to the max height property. We are going to change the max height value in the JavaScript file and this will give us the slide effect. Next let's add the hover effect. And the last thing that I have to do is to target the menu icon. I will push it to the end of the column, make it bigger and apply a a padding on the right side. Now we have to go to the JavaScript file and make the links container slide down and up when we toggle the menu icon. Let's clear, clear the screen from the browser and open the JavaScript and the index file side by side. In the JavaScript file I need access to the icon and the links container. Next I will assign an on-click event listener to the icon. Every time we click on the icon a function will run. Inside the function I will use an if statement to check if the max height of the links container is 0. We know that this, that this is true. We did set the max height to 0 in the CSS file. Here it is. If this is true, we use the scroll height property that every element has and get the actual height of the links container. It doesn't matter if the max height property is set to 0. And we assign the value to the max height property. Else I will set the max height property to its initial value. And that's it. Let's test it out. Let's reload the page and click on the menu icon. We see the links container is sliding down. That is because the max height value has changed to the actual height of the links container. And when we click again, the links container is sliding up because the max height value is set back to zero. The mobile navigation is working. Let's go to the media queries.css file and code the desktop version. Let's start with a menu icon and hide it in the large screen. Next, let's modify the links container. I will set the position to relative and the top property to zero. This will put the links container back to the nav element. This is important. Next, I will target the A tags. I will set the display property to inline block. This will display the links next to each other. The rest properties are here to make things pretty. Next, I will change the font color when we hover over the links. And last, I will set the nav element to a max width of 1000 pixels and center it on the page. And that's it. Let's check it out. Here is a navigation menu on a large screen, nice, and everything is working fine. And that's it for today, thanks for watching guys, see you in the next video.